Well, we got a call from our agent, Troy Blakely, uh, at the time from ICM, and he told us about this festival that sounded a little odd initially because it was, you know, Steve Wozniak from Apple Computers. It wasn't, uh, you know, a, a, one of the concert promoters that was in the circuit, so to speak. And uh, he was aligned with Barry Fay, who was a major promoter that we worked with a lot from Denver. So that gave the idea some credibility. But initially, you're kind of, you know, suspicious that, well, does this guy know what he's doing? Uh, why does he want to run the concert? What's the idea? What's the Unison Corp? So there's all that apprehension. And then it gradually started to come together when Van Halen was on the bill and, you know, Ozzy was on the bill. And everybody just became convinced that Steve's idea was a great one. And the next thing you know, he had this, uh, you know, he had a fantastic, uh, a fantastic lineup. Yeah, I think Steve's concept was really uh, an idea that music was sort of a, a bonding force that could uh, uh, make people, you know, pause and think about uh, the way they're living their lives. It was, it was a very, very heady idea that he really had, and because of uh, his success with Apple, uh, he was able to, you know, take his dream and make it a reality. And I think it did have an effect on, on the consciousness of the audience at the time. I mean, there was really, there was a lot of love in the venue. And uh, you could feel it on stage, you could see it in the faces of the, uh, you know, the crowd. And uh, I, I think he got his wish in that respect. Getting to the show was the biggest problem. We almost didn't get to the show, but uh, we were in Florida uh, playing at the Tangerine Bowl. It was easy top. And uh, we had to move our positioning on the show back a little bit towards midday because we had a 5 o'clock flight to get to California because our slot in the US Festival was the next day. So we're Saturday in Florida and Sunday in California. So it was like, get off stage, get in the limo, don't change, change on the plane, get the, enough equipment that we can actually, like guitars and things that would be important, get them to the airport, and boom, on the plane, away we go. I mean, we're at the hotel, there was a, or a motel, I guess, which was the only accommodations within 50 miles of, of where the site was, which was south of San Bernardino. And what's the name of that place? Devore, Devore, California. So really, we, I guess we limoed from, from LAX to the motel. And that was it. I mean, you didn't see the site because we had missed our sound check day because we were in Florida. <laughs> so we didn't have the opportunity for sound check or anything. The first time we saw the site was from the helicopter uh, on the way in. We were uh, at the site in time to play. And it was, it was a little tough because we had uh, guitar amps that weren't ours. I had a set of drums that I'd never played before. And so we realized we are going to have to wing it from a technical point of view. They had great people uh, on stage. I mean, you had every guitar tech, sound tech that you could, you know, possibly uh, dream of having. I think the, the package on the day that we played was an incredible lineup. If you were a rock fan in the 80s and you got to see Ozzy, the Scorpions, Van Halen, Judas Priest, Motley Crue, uh, did I miss anybody? Triumph. Triumph. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those guys. Those guys. Uh, if you got to see that lineup just back to back, I mean... It's going to be the best lineup ever for a rock festival, so to speak. I can't think of one that's maybe over in, uh, in Europe. They have, you know, these massive things in Nebworth and wherever else, but uh, where they do get a pretty good lineup of talent. But over here in North America, it's very, very hard to get those kind of acts together. Yeah, you know, it was all, because... All headliners. It know. was because all, all, those, all those acts were independently able to play the arenas in the California market, so to get them all on one bill was, was phenomenal. And uh, so I think that, you know, there's a little bit of history there just because that's the only time that that happened with those acts for those people. Uh, like, you know, like some of the other shows that, you know, that have, uh, you know, created some great memories. You know, they had a great lineup, they had a great location, and, and I think the US Festival is, is one, of those, uh, one of those events that people will remember for the rest of their lives.
Some of the bands had reputations for not being, not being enamored of each other, so there was a separation. You know, we had our compound, we were next to Ozzy, who was next to Scorpions, who was next to wherever. And, and uh, so, uh, but there was this one massive tent that was the hospitality area, so that's where everybody kind of hung out. You know, Gil and Rick were, were, well, at least I went there, and my wife certainly did, Rosie. <laughs> but. Uh, it was it was it was kind of fun, especially after after we played. Gil and Rick took off right away, so um, I got to hang out and and hang out with everybody. So it was uh, it was a neat experience, just being it's like being at the All Star game, if you're a baseball player. Judas Priest went on before us, and it was about 100 and I don't know 105 degrees, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and bright sunshine, no clouds, and when the guys come out and they've got the leathers on, you know with the studs and leather guitar straps, leather boots, leather pants, leather vest, leather underwear, the whole nine yards, leather hats, leather gloves. <laughs> so much leather you've never seen anyway. Leather roadies. <laughs> leather roadies. The stage was, uh, it, it had to be the biggest stage that we'd ever set foot on. Uh, initially, it gives you this odd uh, perspective on uh, your spatial relationship with the other musicians. Uh, you kind of feel like you're playing in, uh, you know, in separate venues, <laughs> it's so big. And, uh, and then you adjust to that, and you know, everything is, is to scale, so the monitors are you know, huge and really loud, and uh, you, know, you just sort of get used to that bigger environment. You know, it's, like, it's like driving an SUV. <laughs> I thought the band played great, um, and and the the tapes kind of justified. I personally had some problems um, just just dealing with the the size of the audience, but you know at the end of the day, when you when you really looked out and you could see the the mountains in the background when you look left, and the mountains in the background when you looked right, and the mountains dead ahead of you, it was like it was like totally it was like you're in the Southern California dream atmosphere. I mean, it must have been great to be in the crowd, never mind being on stage. You couldn't see the end of the people. It just it was this ocean that they, it's like looking at the ocean, right? It, it never ends until the sun goes down. And then you see, oh, that's where the horizon is. But the people didn't end. It just kept going, and you could not from the stage. You could not see the end of them. It was a it was a sea of people, a sea of humanity. It wasn't uh, like any show you could you know expect when you showed up to see. You couldn't visualize what you were going to be confronted with. You looked out, and uh, e even though there was people as far as the eye could see, you had a great, you know, panoramic view that was h several hundred feet wide, right in front of the stage, and the enthusiasm was just incredible. I got a, one of those remote cameras. You really don't see them much, but there was probably I don't know five or six remote cameras that'd be following you around. Guys on booms and electronic things, and and I turned around and one was right 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 in my face, and bounced off it kind of. But it was like playing a TV show more than anything else. It wasn't really like a rock event. It took me a while personally to find the groove because you go, "Hello, California," and you're so far away from the audience. By the time the sound got back to you, you were already saying something else. So you had no idea what exactly was happening with the audience. So after about four songs, I just went, you know what? You just play to the cameras because everybody's looking at the big Diamond Vision screens. And, you know, finally I found the groove. So that was sort of probably the first time I had ever been scared being on stage. Like actual anxious and, and a kind of fear. Like, how are, how are we doing? It's hard to, hard to communicate with the audience. So. It was, like I say, it took me a while to get into, to find the groove. The other guys were fine. Me, I was just, I was like uh, out there with the audience somewhere. I think when we first walked out on stage, there was a little bit of a uh, feeling of being overwhelmed by the scope of what was in front of us. And when you realize that, you know, the, I mean, they're not just there to see you, they're there to see everybody on the bill. But when you know you're a part of that, uh, you just uh, realize that your music has touched a lot of people. Crowd was great. They were awesome the whole way through. Uh, you know, with with the uh, we had the, with those big fire hoses they were spraying the audience with because it was hot, hot, hot and dusty and everything. So as as hot and dusty as it was for the entertainers, it was it was uh, even worse for the uh, the fans out there. The crowd was uh, it was very interesting 
uh, with, if you took your eye off the big picture and you actually zeroed in on, on, on a small area, you could see there were, you know, families, there were, you know, people with dogs, there'd be somebody having a picnic over here, there'd be somebody on somebody else's shoulders over here, and uh, just a whole sort of communal atmosphere that you wouldn't normally see at a concert. It wasn't so much an individual thing, it was more the way Steve had conceived of it. It really was this, this us concept was really kind of uh, uh, part of the consciousness, I think, of, of the kids. They were, really, uh, they were really good to each other. There was no fear of violence. They were just having fun. It was great. I've got, uh, I've got really strong feelings about Triumph fans because they've always been so good to me personally, you know, as well as Mike and Rick, I'm sure, but we all have our own experiences, and it's never ending. They're not uh, anything other than genuine in their approach, and 99.99% are, you know, very polite and very respectful and uh, really love the music. We were a part of their life, and uh, you feel very privileged uh, when you look back to be able to have touched people that way. Waz, what, what can you say about a guy um, that invented the Apple computer um, and didn't sell out to, to Bill Gates? I mean, this is the most uh, amazing guy in the world. Uh, it was a pleasure to, to know him. It's still a pleasure to know him and uh, actually call him a friend. And we talk now and then, so he's just a super dude. Waz was, was an amazing character. He, he's probably the only example of, of a concert promoter who wasn't trying to make money. Uh, <laughs> he really wanted to have a big party and bring people together in a positive way. I mean, he really had this virtuous uh, concept and he followed it through and spent an awful lot of money making it happen. And uh, at the site, you could just see, he was like, he was like uh, a kid at Christmas. I mean, he was riding around on, on one of those little uh, all-terrain vehicles, and he buzzed all the way around the perimeter of the site, and you know, look at everybody having a good time. Waz is a uh, uh, he, he's a he's a great guy. There's nothing else you can say about him. He's given away most of the money that he's made from Apple computers, which not many people know, and uh, it's like the way he ran this event. It was all about people and giving. It wasn't about making a profit or uh, selling tickets or pumping up his own ego. Just a great human being. Us Festival, 20 years later, 20 years before. Amazing experience, great bands, great day, great fans, great personal rewards, fabulous time. Uh, beautiful memories. The US Festival was an amazing moment for, uh, for Rick, for Mike, for myself. But we'll sure never forget it, and we'll probably have fun watching it ourselves. Now,